We're here today with Mightmare. Yeah? That's a great name. I love Mightmare. Is that your idea? I'm assuming. <laughs> is this your fault? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. I'm going to um, start. It's going to get real weird. Going to start it off that way. Yeah. I uh, chose the name Mightmare years ago, back in my drinking days. Yeah. I was pretty wasted watching YouTube videos of um, CCR songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as YouTube commenters do, someone commented the lyrics in the in the comment section there. And they uh, I was listening to Run Through the Jungle, and they misspelled Nightmare as Mightmare. And I was like, damn, that's good. 
That is really good. Yeah. So you don't drink anymore? I don't. Good for you. How long has it been? Uh, over like three and a half years. Dang. I'm year and eight months. Congrats. Hell yeah. And I came up with a band name back in my blackout days. Nice. Called Tan Vampire. Tan Vampire. <laughs> a fucking great name. Damn. I just have to live up to the band name. It's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So <laughs> how uh, how did this project come about? Because I know let's, for the audience, there's Sarah Shook and the Disarmers. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Which is done, which is your, that's. That's my day job. That's your day job. Yeah. Okay. I'm moonlighting with this. You're, and this is your side hustle. Yeah. This is your moonlighting exactly. kind of deal. So how did this come about? Well, uh, I had a, a bunch of demos that were like not Disarmers songs. Uh, the Disarmers are country. And um, I've always really loved indie rock. And when the, when the, uh, when the pandemic hit, I was like, I have to do something or I'm going to lose my mind, especially like being on the road 150 days a year is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not even just not being on the road. It's like literally just being in your house for like a year and a half or two years. Um, so I decided to um, start working on these songs as like demos. And I got about halfway through a couple of them and I'm like, damn dude, if I like, tweak this and tweak this a little bit like i could actually make a record in my damn living room by myself like i could i could make this work um and i did and um and then cruel uh liars was that came about that's the album and then kill rock stars was like yep we'll put it out and i was like holy shit uh 17 year old me is like screaming i've been screaming inside for the last year <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and then um I I hit up my booking agent and I was just like I made this record Kill Rockstars is going to put it out. Um let's book a tour and he was like River, you don't have a band. I was like I don't care, just book the tour and we'll make the band happen. Totally. Yeah. And Absolutely. uh you know, I'm not I'm not going to let this guy down. Fuck yeah, yeah. Kill Rockstars. I'm a huge Elliot Smith fan. So yeah. when I you told me that that they were you were on kill that you all are on kill rock stars i was like oh respect yeah i'm dropping everything to embarrass myself in front of the internet <laughs> so um so you put all this together and you're you're probably do what logic is how you were recording it or garage band fuck yeah garage yeah. band so same yep. shit so garage band you're doing like backing beats or whatever generic kind of beats and then yeah so i wanted it yeah. to be an indie rock record and then because i didn't have like a full band at my disposal i had to figure out how to program beats and then the album itself turned out to be pretty poppy um and i love it and i'm proud of it but i'm also really excited to have a band that's bringing the songs to life in the way that i originally imagined them weigh me down and tell me to stand down
something that you brought up earlier that we we as non touring artists or just fans of music have heard is how difficult COVID was, you know, going from this life of touring 150 days or whatever it is to stop. Like what can you, I mean, I can understand it intellectually, but I mean, can you, can you speak on that? Like what, what the hell was that like? I do think it's a little unquantifiable. Um, I realizing that I was going to be off the road indefinitely was pretty damn depressing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I started this project and I started therapy and I decided to really utilize my time off the road to work on my mental health. Um, which I'm very grateful that I made that decision. Um, cause I feel like when you tour as relentlessly as we tour, you really don't have time. Like you don't have time. Mm -hmm. And I, I am grateful that the pandemic provided a couple years to like really work on past trauma and um like understand myself and my motives a little bit better um because i i you know your your music is directly related to who you are as a person and if you want to grow as an artist and you want to mature and evolve as an artist you have to grow and mature and evolve as a human being mm -hmm. um and the more self-awareness that you can develop um i think i think the better and it you know that benefits everyone in your life too not just you mm, definitely yeah
All right. <laughs> Lightning round. Here we go. Artists that influence you the most. Go. Fat. Don't think about it. Go. <clears throat> Interpol. Nice. Interpol. I love their new um, record. It's great. Go. Black Angels. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have more answers? <laughs> uh, Death Cab for Cutie. Got it. Uh, from Indian Lakes. Radiohead. Goddamn from Indian Lakes. Yes, sir. Okay. That's why I like you guys. They're some of my favorite bands. Go. The Clash. Okay. Done. Got it. Okay. First song you ever heard that moved you? I'll go first. Mine was Hot Child in the City. I was born in 1975. Okay. Dare You to Move by Switchfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. No. You were gonna say? No. no. S- Switchfoot, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Switchfoot. That fuck. melody is like. Don't that's, fuck that with. Was, dude, that record is the literal first record I was ever allowed to listen to, and that's what got me like into music. Anyway. I shake your hand. See, look at that. Chicago Music Exchange interviews, bringing information to bands that they didn't know about each other. All right, yeah, no, Switchfoot, that's, there's some mega melodies. All right, Blake, go. I think I have vivid memories when I was like seven, like that song, semi Charm Life by Third Eye Blind was like always on the fucking radio. And so I just have that guitar riff and the doo-doos. I think I felt something then. <laughs> you were moved. Yes. Uh, yes. Purple Haze, J- Jimmy changed everything for me. Nice. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, fave recording artist right now. Favorite record or recording artist right now? Haim. Okay. Where uh, the music part three? Uh, Super Wolves, second LP. Uh, Black Angels, Wilderness of Mirrors. Been crushing that in the van. Hell yeah. Uh, I've been destroying All Day Gentle Hold by Porches and also the Sinai Vessel record um, that came out. Hell yeah. Okay. All right. Favorite Halloween candy. Go. Uh, candy corn. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. Dark chocolate. Yes. Reese's. Yes. Okay. First thing you do when you get back from tour. Pee with the bathroom door open. Hell yeah. Sleep. Also sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to work. <laughs> If you were given Jeez. the chance to steal something, what would that be? Your heart. Oh. That was my answer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, there's always the chance to steal something. Are you implying like like stealing something and getting away with it? Trick question. Could be anything. That's your answer. If that's hey, Ooh, you can- y'all got that Kramer upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Ash is going to take some international delight. <laughs> Uh, the Declaration of Fucking in- Independence. <laughs> I don't know. So we can burn it? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> some dignity. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Would you take it if you had the opportunity to be immortal? Hell no. No. Maybe. <laughs> no, but only because at some point the planet is going to be uninhabitable and it would be really boring. There'd be no one and everything would be on fire and you'd just be like, still here i'm with you fuck that all right how do you feel about clowns uh they're fun yeah cool how do you feel about clowns clowns yep yeah not the thing (laughs) okay i don't know if i have an opinion i think clowns can go fuck themselves all right clowns (laughs) go fuck themselves favorite city to play Ooh. milwaukee chicago and this is an important one so i really want you to think hard on this one Cinnabons with raisins, yes or no? No. No. I don't think that's vegan. Right. Also no. Fuck. Damn. That's sorry. sorry. That's oh, not a raisin guy. Sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> sorry to do it to you. All right, nightmare. Uh, you guys are awesome. Well, I love you, and I hate everything, so that means a lot because I'm a Hell big deal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank internet. You. Go and find this band, and then go find Sarah Shook and the Disarmers as well. And, uh, you know, someday someone will say yes to Raisins. Peace!